what shape are blocks in VLSI? In VLSI, very large scale integration, blocks typically don't have exotic shapes. They are most commonly rectangular. This is the most prevalent shape for VLSI blocks. It allows for efficient utilization of space and simplifies the routing process, connecting blocks with wires. Rectilinear. This is a broader term encompassing rectangles and squares. A square block is essentially a special case of a rectangle with equal width and height. Here's why these shapes dominate. Manufacturing simplicity. Rectangular shapes are easier and more cost effective to manufacture during the chip fabrication process. Routing efficiency. Straight lines are easiest to implement with metal wires for connecting blocks. Rectangles and squares naturally lend themselves to this approach. Area optimization. Rectangular blocks allow for better packing efficiency when placing them on the chip layout, minimizing wasted space. However, there can be exceptions. Irregular shapes. In rare cases, specific blocks might have slightly irregular shapes due to their internal structure or function. However, these shapes are still generally close to rectangles for manufacturability reasons. It's important to remember. The focus in physical design is on functionality and efficiency. Fancy shapes wouldn't necessarily offer any advantages. The overall chip itself might not be perfectly rectangular, but the individual blocks within it will most likely be. What are the dimensions of blocks in VLSI? The dimensions, width and height of blocks in VLSI circuits aren't predetermined by any specific standard. Instead, they depend on several factors. 1. Functionality of the block. Different blocks serve different purposes. A simple logic gate might have a smaller footprint compared to a complex memory block. 2. Design choices. Engineers can choose how to implement the block's functionality. This can impact its size. For example, using more transistors in parallel can increase speed but also require more space. 3. Standard cell libraries. In some cases, engineers use pre-designed and pre-characterized logic cells from libraries. These cells come in specific sizes, height is usually fixed, to ensure compatibility and ease of placement. 4. Overall chip area constraints. The total area available on the chip dictates the maximum possible size for each block. The goal is to minimize wasted space while ensuring all functionalities are implemented. Here's how you can think about it. Imagine a rectangular plot of land, the chip area. You want to build efficient, functional houses, blocks, on this land. The size of each house depends on its purpose, simple versus complex, and how you design it, number of rooms. Some pre-built houses, standard cells, might come in fixed sizes. Ultimately, you want to arrange the houses, blocks, to fit on the land, chip area, efficiently. While there's no one-size-fits-all answer, block dimensions in VLSI typically range from micrometers, micro-m, to tens of micrometers, micro-m, for width and height.